right, so go ahead and tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Lisa Soto. I'm born and raised in El Paso. Uh, I went first to schools in the El Paso Independent School District, and then ultimately my parents were able to make the sacrifice to send me to Loretto Academy to graduate from uh, high school. Um, I had a rocky road at the beginning, but, uh, but I worked real hard. Uh, we were um, very much expected to not only work hard, but serve others. And so in high school, uh, I, I did just that, and I was able to earn a place with scholarships and financial aid at Stanford University, where I graduated with a public policy degree and honors in education. And then I went on to UT for law school and to uh, intern with the Texas Supreme Court during my time there. So talk to me a little bit about what your experience is. My experience, yeah. okay. I saw bio, but I kind of Yes, 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 yes. So I think um, if I had to divide up my, my boots on the ground experience, it would be fourfold. Uh, first, I'm currently a contract attorney with the Eighth Court of Appeals. In that capacity, um, I've been able to, to, to do the job, to know the job, and to uh, love the job. It's, it's a lot of legal analysis, looking at case records, and giving the parties a very fair opportunity to analyze legal arguments and um, ascertain whether the courts below have erred. Aside from that, I have 24 plus years of legal experience practicing law uh, in Texas and in California as well. Um, I have 13 plus years as an attorney um, in, in uh, professor practice capacity at UTEP. And so I teach and motivate and empower students who are aspiring law students in our community. I also make it a point to go out into the community um, because we have pockets of talent everywhere and uh, inform them of what it means to pursue a, a legal profession. Because sometimes we go out into the community and you say law and they think law enforcement, which is, which is completely fine, but you want to expose our community to the possibility of, of going to law school. And that's really what I've dedicated a lot of my time to the last 13 years. Um, in connection with uh, learning about the law and teaching law and legal analysis, I've also uh, partnered up with community entities like the Court Appointed Special Advocates, the Juvenile Probation Department, um, and the Immigrant Advocacy Centers to, uh, to create programs where our students at UTEP can not only learn legal skills and legal analysis through hands-on work, but also serve the community in that way. Migrants, uh, kids who have been abused and neglected, and, uh, and kids at, at JPD, a lot of whom are there because uh, they have mental health issues that are unaddressed and they get uh, the, they penetrate the criminal justice system instead of get help for what um, they're dealing with. And so we work with families in that context and the students learn the law. Do you practice that kind of law? Um. So my personal practice is more on the employment law side. Um, I, I do, I've done uh, consistently employment law for over 24 years. Here in El Paso, I've represented primarily uh, employees uh, uh, and, and union members. Um, I also uh, represented the um, all, all but one volunteer fire department in the county of El Paso and uh, negotiated their contracts with the county. So it's a, it's, a, it's a broad array. The other thing that I really enjoyed in my legal practice here in El Paso is um, helping small business where it's a mom and pop shop but it grows into a bigger business because they have a lot of uh, talent in the trade. And so once you grow a little bit bigger, then all of a sudden the niece doing the books or the, you know, the, the relative at the front desk, they have to comply with other laws as they grow. And so I enjoy helping small business uh, in that respect. So Ms. Soto, you said, you said two things I kind of want to go back to. Sure. Um, so one of them was, you said you're a contract lawyer for the appellate court now. Correct. And you're kind of doing the job. Uh, but it's the justices that do the job. So can right. you kind of explain to right. me what you mean by that? So, so I don't so, want I don't want people to be confused. Absolutely, that absolutely. What might hear you say you're doing the job, but right. it's actually the justice. Is doing it. So, right. Can you kind of elaborate? Absolutely. So, so I get assigned to cases, and I get provided the records. The justices are the ones that make the decisions. The justices are the ones who who author the decisions. But the people doing the work behind the scenes are the attorneys that work for the justices, and that's a, a position I hold as a contract-based uh, uh, okay. position. Yeah. Uh, and then the second thing you wanted that, that you mentioned uh, that I wanted to circle back in, yes. and you know, I'm, I'm a union person, so I, I'm yes. very astute on this issue. Yes. And I'm, I'm very um, passionate about it. Mm -hmm. um, you had mentioned your experience, and I saw in a bio mm -hmm. that you had a lot of experience working with management mm -hmm. and representing management. Uh, in the state of Texas, and you've practiced in California yes, and Texas, yes, yes. so you know the difference between yes, the two in terms absolutely. of uh, uh, workers' rights. Mm -hmm. And in Texas, um, unions have been gutted. Workers' mm -hmm. rights um, are, are almost non-existent because they've been under assault by the Texas state legislature. 
Um, that's why this race matters a lot because of stare decisis and 20 years of Republicans running the legislature and running the courts. Typically, the, the Supreme Court in Texas only hears 100, 200 cases. 10%, maybe. Right. So, very often, the Court of Appeals is kind of the buck stops there. Absolutely. So, how can union advocates, how can labor, how can workers be reassured that someone who has an experience negotiating for management isn't going to further erode workers' rights? So, so first of all, let, let me be clear, as a judicial candidate, we're not able to opine or talk about what we think about any issues that might be, come before the Court of Appeals, and that's, that's pursuant to Texas law. What I think is important to do is to look at my record and look at what I've done. So uh, when Mr. Abekia talks about uh, having represented both management and employees, that is absolutely the case. So let me give you an example. In California, I represented uh, mostly management. And yeah. management um, is, right, management is, is school boards um, for colleges and schools, county entities. Uh, I can tell you that in my experience on that side in California, I was assigned primarily um, majority minority districts in urban areas, and uh, my my fight for equality because the California Constitution ensures equal educational opportunity, unlike the Texas Constitution. So I, I am I am actually very proud of, of some of the litigation that I was was a part of. Um, for example, there was a statewide class action lawsuit that ultimately resulted where I represented. Um, one of the cross defendants uh, school district that came from um, the school district where one of the certified class action plaintiff representatives came from, uh, that action was, uh, we were cross defendant from the governor and the school, uh, the, the uh, state superintendent. In that case, there was an allegation that uh, students were not receiving equal treatment in terms of uh, instructional materials, facilities, and quality educators. Uh, I was I was a part of uh, that lawsuit in representing the Ravenswood City School District, which is uh, almost exclusively uh, black and brown, and that uh, lawsuit ultimately resulted in uh, us going back and asking the governor. Then it was Schwarzenegger who ultimately was a part of the settlement, uh, but but they allocated more funds to make. Uh, to, okay. to try to make up the difference. So when you say represent management, I do want to put it in context because I always brought a fair perspective at the, to the table. And when I negotiated on behalf of management, it was to ensure that these children were represented well because that was about having, um, you know, looking at the school district's budgets and making sure that the ultimate goal was serving the students well. And so I, I very much stand behind that management practice. Uh, in Texas, my primary uh, legal practice centered around employees and representation of employees. So, um, and I certainly don't want to confuse anyone that, that's watching, so I'm glad that you clarified Thank that. Thank you. Uh, but did you or did you not ever do contract negotiations for management? Yes, I did contract negotiations on behalf of school districts and community college districts in California. I also did um, contract negotiations on behalf of the volunteer fire departments in the county of El Paso on the side of the volunteer fire departments. Okay. And, and then their people, yes. Okay. Yes. So, okay. So did you look, represent Local 51? Local 51, so my husband is actually the president of Local 51. Yeah, no. um, That is not, yeah, no, 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 that is not, that's the city fire department. That's okay. the El Paso uh, fire department. What I'm talking about is the volunteer fire departments that through the ESD cover the rural areas. Oh, the areas ESDs the are unionized? No, 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 no. So the ESDs yeah. are responsible for yeah, executing. Familiar. Okay. So when you have the ESDs passing along the duties to the volunteer fire departments, then they there's six, seven individual volunteer fire departments who execute on the work. And so I represented um, all of one ESD, which includes six volunteer fire departments in in those. Uh, in that context. So you uh, represented the ESD? I did not represent the ESD. I okay. represented the volunteer fire departments. Okay. So the volunteer fire departments, okay. um, in essence, have to negotiate with the ESD okay. for, um, for so how... So the volunteer fire department, not, not a union, but, but the workers... Oh, the and volunteer. that is not... That, that was not union work, just to be clear. Okay. Um, 
I, I represented um, many, many members of the Association of Texas Professional Educators. Uh, I worked with the firm of choice for, for, for representation boots on the ground uh, for, for the members. So I've represented um, groups of bus drivers, custodians, um, everybody under the sun when it comes to um, educational institution representation so on the employee speaking, side. If you were speaking to an undecided voter, what would you yes. tell them? I would say that, that when you look at uh, the overall picture of a, of a judicial candidate, you, especially at this level where you're talking about reviewing the records of what has already been litigated in the courts below, you want somebody who has a well-balanced perspective, but also somebody who's willing to, to, to dig into to that law and dig into that, the facts and really understand complex legal issues. And that's why I think it's important to, to, to talk about the backgrounds we have and how varied mine is because that enables me to really understand a whole slew of different issues, complex, uh, simpler issues, and across the spectrum. Um, but most importantly, I think you want somebody who has um, a, a real uh, disposition of fairness um, and of compassion of our community values, and somebody who's going to listen carefully and, and, and really be thoughtful and careful and diligent about the decisions. And uh, my work ethic, I, I, I can say, is, is unmatched. Um, I've worked since I was a kid. Um, my grandparents had a Soto's grocery store on uh, South Stanton, uh, between 3rd and 4th, uh, downtown. And uh, I was uh, stocking groceries uh, since I was, since I was, I probably, you know, since I could talk. <laughs> okay, so uh, if folks want to keep up with your campaign or keep up with you or get more information, where do they go? So please visit my website, sotoforjustice.org. You can also go to my social media. The Facebook and the Instagram are Soto for Justice. And I would love to have you uh, like it, connect with it, uh, send us pictures. Uh, we want to hear from the community. The other thing that's important to me as a candidate, and this is another thing that um, I've been doing in the community, is I am directly accessible. I, I want uh, to hear from people. Uh, I'm interested in listening to everybody. I have not excluded anybody or any um, person from my discussions, and there's room at the table, at my table, for everybody. It's not about me, it's about us and our community. Um, and that's my motivation to run. It's it's uh, it, it's about the community. And, and as I said before, uh, although not on this interview, uh, I've committed over 11 years to being a court appointed special advocate for abuse kids. Uh, and, and those things are very important to me. And those things have enabled to me, me to be a very keen listener. Um, and in the community, uh, that's what I've been doing since I decided to run. And, and I want to hear from you. So I'm going to give you uh, also my phone number, 915-235-0904. And my email where you can reach me directly is sotoforjustice at gmail.com. Uh, it's important to have a candidate who's going to listen and a candidate who's going to make fair decisions, and that's me.